you know, I don't collect wines and cordials, but I'm just blown away when I look at this display because each one of these pieces has a story. Each one of these pieces means so much to some person. And after 10 o'clock tonight, it's gone. You're never going to see it together in one room. And so now's our chance to savor it. So with that, I present Kisses Sweeter Than Wine and Mr. John Nielsen. We didn't do it all. And I just want to tell you all the people who helped, who provided pieces. Uh, I know you saw the names on the uh, little tags, but I just want to run down the list quickly. Carl and Eunice Booker, Don and Barbara Chamberlain, Kathy and Reg Dunham, Gail Eichhorst, John Galvin, Don Keim, Bob and Geneva Leonard, Sharon and Bill Mizell, Lee Markley, Ted and Judy Meeker, and Jack Targonsky, and they're the ones you should thank for a lot of the display you see here, and it is truly one of a kind. How about Nielsen? Uh, we brought a few. <laughs> I'm going to just run down the main cordial sets starting at the far end and starting with the foreign sets because many of them are one of a kind or very rare. One of the reasons you haven't seen this before is because a few years ago nobody had found them and now they're coming out of Australia, or Australia, Argentina, uh, Germany. I bought them from the Netherlands, from Belgium and uh, some of them you've only seen the cordials, never saw, seen the decanters before. Uh, I'm going to start with the far end uh, decanter set and work my way down till I get to the cordials and I don't know anything about the cordials because they're weird. <laughs> So you don't have to listen to me talk. I'm not going to talk about it. And if I talk about the wrong set, it's because I can't see 90 feet down the far end. And Loretta is going to point out with her pointer, her laser beam, which set I'm talking about. Uh, we started with Germany. Uh, Germany, uh, the main producer was Brockwitz. And the first set is called Bremen. We got this from Jorge and Jorge, who some of you know, in or Argentina. If you look in the Century of Carnival Glass or the Standard Encyclopedia, they only show the wines. This was the first complete set we had ever seen. The next set, I'm sure you know, seen, some of you have seen, it's called Miniature Hobnail or Hobnail. The original name was Kohenor. Uh, the first set seen was sold at the Brit auction by Mickey Reichel in 1998. Sold for $800. I think it's gotten a little cheaper since, since more sets have shown up. Uh, and of course, in many of these sets, it is the Thistlewoods who, has who have identified the maker. So you need their books if you're going to collect cordial sets. Third set is called Moonprint. And we just got that one in February from Argentina again. And uh, there's a dealer down there who sells on eBay. And when I buy a set from him, he wraps it all up, he puts it in a wooden box, and he nails the top on, and he ships it direct. And when it got there, one of the cordials was smashed to pieces. And we still can't figure out how that happened. And I can't find another cordial. <laughs> Moonprint is pretty scarce still. Uh, there are other pieces in Moonprint. You know, they, there are uh, cheese dishes and so on that other people have seen. Regal Cane is the next one. This set is kind of unusual because instead of stemmed cordials, it comes with tiny mugs and about the tiniest mugs I have ever seen, little mugs with handles. Uh, we bought this set, we went up to the New England for the convention, oh, five or six years ago. Jorge and Jorge, our Argentinian friends were there, and they had given Tom Burns the set to put into the auction. 
Well, the Thistlewoods were the speakers at that convention. We wanted that set, and the Thistlewoods wanted that set. And we got into a little bit of a bidding war, and we wound up with the set. Now, there are other sets that have shown up since. Next to that set is a cordial in Regal Cane. You would think the cordial sets with the stem cordials would be easier to find, but they're not. I, I only know of four of those cordials. Uh, the Leonard's brought one. I think the book has bought one. Uh, I know Ed Kramer has one. And there was one that sold at the Brit auction I mentioned, because John Britt had found the first one and written it up. Uh, I don't think it's any of those three, but it might be. And looking way back in Tom Mardini's books, I found a part set had sold at auction one time. Uh, so they're still pretty rare. Uh, Regal Kane uh, is also known in others, other, uh, you know, the, the Regal Kane I think is the one also that comes with a, uh, it's a, a clock frame. Usually it has a clock from Spain or Argentina in it. And I haven't been able to get my hands on one of those. <clears throat> the next one is called Rose Band, uh, but it's not there because we couldn't find one. Uh, it's very similar to the Band of Roses, which is made in Argentina, but Rose Band was made in Brockwitz. And as many hap many has happened many a time, uh, they think Argentine uh, Cristellarius Picardo copied the design because it's very, very close. There are two cordials along here somewhere that I believe the Lenners brought that uh, are supposed to be rose band and they're different. So one of them I think is Band of Roses and the other is Rose Band. And we haven't been able to figure it out because I don't have the books handy. <coughs> Moving right along, uh, you may have heard of a pattern called tartan or daisy and cane. We have a number of pieces in tartan including a milk pitcher and a tumbler. And in the book it says there is a decanter and a wine. I have never seen one. I've never seen a picture of one. But we know Brockwitz put it out. And uh, that's one of the frustrating things that you see these catalog pieces, but you can't find them. The uh, other, uh, OK, that's all we have from Germany. And now Czechoslovakia is the other major foreign producer. I should mention that. Uh, there are Ada in Sweden and the, Nor and the Finnish uh, Italia and the other Finnish outfit, Rihimaki. We cannot find a single cordial or wine that they made. I think they just use their shot glasses, they get a bottle of Aquavit and they pour it right in the shot glasses and you don't need any stinking wine decanters, you know, so. <laughs> Czechoslovakia. The first producer was Inwald, and there is a drapery variant set there with four little shot glasses. It may be uh, a whiskey set, it may be a wine set, but could those shot glasses come mighty small. They come in several sizes. Uh, the Sisselwoods wrote an article about drapery variant very recently uh, for our, actually they put it in our newsletter and they had thought that this was an Inwald pattern. They found it in Inwald, and then they pinned it down. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of sizes of shot glasses. I think Don Kime brought a, a shot glass in for comparison. It's, uh, it's much smaller than the ones that came with the decanter. We don't really know which one should be with the decanter originally. Jacoby and Ranger was made by Inwald, and uh, the decanter and the shot glass are known. We have some pieces in Jacoby and Ranger, but we don't have anything in the cordials or wines or decanters. So we're hoping we one of them shows up. And in their network special on Czechoslovakia, the Sisselwoods said that a pattern called Bohemian Ovals 
they had found a decanter and shot glass. So there are other wines and cordials besides the listing you see here. Still, we hope to acquire someday. There's a second producer in Czechoslovakia, and that's Rinskov. They made heavy vine. And heavy vine is turning up in a lot of shapes. Uh, we have a uh, tumble up in heavy vine, and I think uh, we saw this set advertised again on eBay from Argentina, and he said he didn't know the pattern, and he had kind of a bad picture, and I looked and looked, and I said, I think that's heavy vine, and I've never seen a heavy vine wine set, so I bought it, and it was. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how many others of these exist. I've never seen another one of those either. Uh, the Lenners brought in the 49er cordial set. Don Keim brought in a uh, cordial. If you look in the books, you'll see that Bob Smith found a cordial set in Prague, but it had tumblers around the decanter instead of wines. And uh, you don't see the real cordial sets. In fact, I had not seen it until the Lenners, Lenners brought theirs in because it's another rare set. And I know that's starting to sound like a broken record, but that's the way it is. There's also a, a 49er variant with three rows of diamonds instead of four, so maybe there's another kind of set. The next area is Argentina, and Cristolarius Picardo is the maker in Argentina who has been turning out cordial sets and uh, the Sisselwoods again, with the help of their friends in Argentina, have found catalogs. Uh, Berry Ban and Ribs should be the next one. And uh, we bought the cordial set uh, again from Argentina some time ago. And last month, uh, I don't know if you know Gary Roach, Bug54 on eBay, he turned up with the wine set, which is next to it. And it not only has bigger wines, it has a bigger decanter. And that's the only set I've seen where the decanter changes size when you have wine instead of cordials. So I think that's kind of unique. Uh, yeah. The first set that I know of also sold at the Brit auction when Mickey Riker held it in 1998. Uh, that was the one where the John Britt had uh, quite a few cordial sets. And uh, this one sold with four wines. Now, next to that is something called Rising Comet and Grooves. And you see a picture below it of two shot glasses. Rising Comet and Grooves was named by the uh, Thistlewoods because they thought it looked like two vase patterns, rising comet and circles and circles and grooves. And they thought it was made in Czechoslovakia. And then they found those two uh, shot glasses or whatever they are that are pictured. And I have their permission to reproduce it. One of them is green. And there is no green glass, carnival glass, ever made in Czechoslovakia. So they believe it is an Argentine product, but they do not have catalog information as yet. So I put it in Argentina, what the heck. Uh, then there's Daisy and Scroll, which is the next one. I have seen this in blue decanters, and there's a picture of a blue decanter there. Uh, I also purchased this from Argentina. And a number of these sets have shown up from Argentina. Nobody is quite 100% sure, but I put it with Argentina because I think it might be there, uh, one of their products. Now we come to the U.S. manufacturers. And of course, uh, Imperial made most of the cordial wine and the sets, and most of the other manufacturers made very few. In fact, I haven't been able to find a single one from Northwood that I know of. So we wind up uh, 
first diamond in Sunburst, uh, Jack Targonsky brought with the marigold set. We had the purple one. And uh, as far as I know, that's the only two colors it comes in. And of course, I don't believe Imperial ever provided trays. Imperial grape, we all know. Uh, I have to confess we brought that green set, green decanter in because it was so pretty, but it's not iridized. <laughs> and uh, Lee Markley brought the marigold and the par purple sets. Uh, the book has brought uh, uh, smoke and olive green and light green wines. And of course the wines come in clam broth, they come in blue, emerald green, Vaseline, olive, lime, lavender. So quite a selection there. Next to that are flute and cane. There you only have, uh, normally you will only see the wines and cordials, or the wines really. I have a picture of the flute and cane decanter and tray that sold on, that, well, that was on eBay a couple of years ago. It's a very bad picture, but that's what he put up, and he wanted a lot of money for it. I think he listed it for $1,800 or something like that, and it never sold, and then it disappeared again. Uh, so apparently the decanter uh, was really rare, and people weren't even sure it existed until that set showed up. So for a common pattern, it's very un unusual. Star and file. Uh, there's a decanter there, and uh, the Leonard's brought a cordial. The decanter's kind of scarce. It's a very common pattern. A lot, of, a lot of shapes around you. We see it in the malls, but the decanter you not see too often. I've seen complete sets, so it's not rare, but it's a little scarce. Octagon. Very common in marigold. Uh, Gail Ikos brought the marigold set. The Lanners brought the marigold cordial. Booker's brought the blue and purple wines. Cindy Brock and I brought the uh, or teal wine. Now, the decanter also comes in purple. I showed a picture of it because we don't own one. Uh, they've sold on eBay occasionally. Uh, one sold for $700, another $638 in, on eBay. So they're scarce. The green ones are even scarcer. They do come in green. Uh, Gary Roach had one on eBay, but it had a big crack in it, so I didn't buy it. I think the bookers saw one somewhere recently. Okay, go back and buy it. <laughs> uh, very scarce, apparently. Very scarce. I don't know why. Just the way it is. Poor 74, there are only wines and cordials. Optic and Buttons is the next one, and uh, you don't see that too much. The book has brought a marigold wine, and it comes in uh, marigold and clam broth only, I believe. Next to it is Tulip and Cane. Uh, the Leonards and Don Kine bought uh, cordials, and we brought the big one we brought is called a claret. It is not a goblet, it is a claret, which is the next step up from a wine, and then the next step up is goblets, and of course the step down from wines is cordials. So you have to know your sizes. We fill them with water and measure it to make sure we have the right size. Imperial flute, not flute and cane, imperial flute. The Lennons brought a flute cordial and a wine, and the Brookers brought an engraved flute cordial, is that a engraved flute goblet, I'm sorry, is that right? I believe. You didn't bring that? Okay, I thought I had one. Luster and clear. The Brookers brought four different sizes of wines, which I had never seen before, of course. And uh, the Brookers, as you will find out, brought an awful lot of these, and I'm not going to talk about these because I've never seen most of them before. So I'm going to finish before that, and uh, the bookers should put on a seminar someday. <laughs> and the Leonard's brought some cordials and wines too. And finally, I should mention that there is a 
imperial pattern called smooth rays and Carl Burns lists cordials, wines, and clarets, and we have nothing here. I've never seen one. U.S. glass is the next one. And surprisingly, uh, the pineapple and fan set there is believed to be from U.S. glass. The original pattern was called strawberry and fan. Uh, again, you know, there's always this question of the U.S. glass sell their molds to Argentina because this was from Jorge and Jorge again from Argentina. So we're really not sure. The first known uh, pineapple and fan decanter and wine sold at that same Brit auction in 1998. And uh, there have been a few more turn up since then. Uh, John Britt also found a, an iridized wine or whiskey set called uh, in the Manhattan pattern. And if you want to see it, you can go to the Hoga educational books. It's in there, and I think that's the only one that's ever been found. Uh, there are four wine glasses in the King's Crown. You've probably seen King's Crown on eBay and so on. I didn't know they came in four different sizes, and I guess they're all wine glasses because there's not much difference in price. Dugan Diamond is the next maker, and uh, they made the Golden Harvest set. We, uh, Lee Markley brought the Marigold set in. Uh, the, the sets do come in amethyst. They're not expensive, but they're not easy to find either. So. Uh, the wines also have come in lavender. Fenton surprisingly only made a couple of wines. Orange tree uh, wines come in many colors. Uh, the Chamberlain brought the blue and pink. Book has brought the Vaseline and Gail brought a, an engaged, engraved orange tree variant wine. And I never got to ask him, I have to ask him what the variant is because I don't know. And that's all you get in Orange Tree is the wines. Sailboats, same story. They have wines. Uh, Gail brought a marigold one. The bookers have a blue one, which I suspect is rare. The wines are supposed to come marigold, blue, and Vaseline. And that's all Fenton ever produced in wines and cordials. Cambridge. Uh, Stars and Bars is an, a pattern known. It was listed by John Britt. Again, it's in one of his articles. But what we have here is an inverted feather cordial from the Leonards and a wine from the Bookers, both in Marigold. Neither of which I have ever seen an inverted feather. Anything is rare. These are extra rare, I think. Uh, Westmoreland. You know checkerboard. The bookers brought a checkerboard marigold wine, which I didn't really know existed either. So <laughs> I'm learning quite a bit with this display. McKee. Uh, there is a set there, a complete set. We bought it as Colonial Loop. Some people call it Loop. And now they're saying that it's really the O'Hara pattern by McKee. Uh, I looked in this, uh, the complete book of McKee Glass by Sandra McKee Stout, and they picture a wine, they picture a, a cordial, but they don't picture a decanter. The wine sure looks like it, so I guess they're right, but it's a little hard to be sure. But everybody is now saying this is probably the O'Hara pattern by McKee. Next to that are three Aztec wines that Lee, Lee Markley brought in. And I don't think we've ever had an Aztec piece of any kind. I didn't know, that, well, I know they, there were mine, wines in the book, but I didn't know they had made wines, iridized wines, and there they are. Lee, I don't know, where'd you get three of them? Gee. <laughs> uh, Phoenix. You all know Lacey Dewdrop. Well, this is the... Uh, Ivy or Ivy in Snow pattern. The Chamberlains brought uh, blue and marigold wines. 
again, something else I'd never seen before, but that's nothing surprising. Now we come to the miscellaneous or unknowns. And first, we, we'll talk about the decanters anyhow. Uh, star and fan is not a rare set. They just can't seem to find out who made it. Uh, the first set known sold at that Brit auction. Somebody paid $1,200 for it. It's come down in price since then. We bought ours, I think, at uh, Jim Seek's auction in Texas a few years ago. And I've seen other sets on eBay. So it's not a rare set, but it's a mysterious one because nobody can figure out who did it. Prism and Star is the next one. Now, this is an interesting set. Uh, it's the tall one there. And if you look close, you will see first that the stopper is made. It looks like it has a shot glass on top of it. So I guess in theory you could take the stopper and use it to pour the wine and drink out of it. The second thing, if you look real close, one of the uh, little shot glasses is turned on upside down. All of the shot glasses have the word Germany molded into the base and then a random number. Well, this is a pretty rare set. So I sent a picture of the shot glass and a picture of the whole set to the Thistlewoods. And they said the only thing they had ever been able to acquire was a shot glass in crystal. And it had Germany molded into the bottom. So I said, well, did Brockwitz make it? And they said, no, we can't find it in Brockwitz. And we got all these catalogs. And in wall, they said, well, we don't think so, but we don't know anybody else who made carnival glass in Germany. So they took my pictures and they sent it to their correspondent in Germany. I think it might have been Sigmar. And uh, they're gonna tr he's going to try to find out if there is another manufacturer, either you know early or late, who, is, who made carnival glass wine or cordial sets that they don't know about. So I didn't put it in the German. It could have been German unknown, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the zipper stitch. Again, that was considered rare at one time. It sets for, sold for $1,300 at the Brit auction. And we got it in uh, Northern California, another Jim Seeks auctions, uh, for quite a bit less. And now some more showing up. Another set. Nobody has the faintest idea who made it. You can guess Argentina or Germany or whatever. But they're just, you know, there's nothing to confirm it. Uh, now the Leonards brought in a set there that they called Fruit Band. And I believe this is the same thing as uh, Berry Band. Berry Band and Ribs, which we discussed earlier. They brought, no, I'm sorry, that's, that's a different set. Uh, the Fruit Band set I show a picture there of the two decanters. It comes in blue and it comes in marigold. Uh, Doty calls it Berry Band and Ribs by Picardo, uh, but there's another pattern called Berry Band and Ribs, so now it's called Fruit Band, and I'm not sure where that came from. There's a miniature cane set next, and when we looked at it, we realized uh, this was miniature, hop, miniature. Um, I'm sorry, this was regal cane. It was the same set. Uh, and they had a cordial there, and they have a cordial up by our set. So <laughs> and it's sometimes hard to tell. These, some of these things get different names. Uh, then Ted and Judy Meter brought, a, uh, brought in a set called, they call it ribbed. I've never seen it. I have no idea who made it. And I have no clue. So if anybody could identify it, I'm sure Ted would not be very happy. There are a couple of painted decanters there. Uh, one of them is uh, the Meekers brought that big one that shows the peasants dancing. And it looks like one of the peasants has 
man is carrying a uh, pickaxe or something while he's dancing, which I guess is uh, maybe the farmers. I don't know. The other one, the uh, Leonard's brought, and it's slightly risque. The uh, boy is peeing, I think. <laughs> but these are typical of the uh, late Czechoslovakian uh, sets that have been show have shown up before. I, um, I suspect that's what they are, but uh, we'll probably never know. Now, the rest of these sets, uh, the rest of these wines and cordials uh, by the Bookers and the Leonards and a few others like uh, that whose names I mentioned, they've been collecting these things for I don't know, 30 or 40 years, I guess. They all have names, and I don't know for sure where the names come from, but they assure me they're all valid names. <laughs> and I don't know a thing about them. So I'm not going to talk about them. So I just want to expand a little bit on something that Brian said. You couldn't have seen this display a few years ago because a lot of these sets are just coming out of the woodwork. We went to, we're getting them from Argentina, from Belgium, from the Netherlands, wherever we can. And we've been going to conventions for a dozen years or so. We've never seen a display like this. And without the cooperation of, you know, the entire group, we would never have gotten this together. And I suspect it'll be a long time before you see another display like this. Thank you. <laughs>